five. Write an equation of the image after each transformation and simplify. All right, these ones are going to be a little trickier because um, we are going to be applying the transformations to the function. In the previous example, we were just stating what the transformations are. That's always easier. When we go the other way, when we're trying to come up with the image equation or the transformed function, it's just a little tougher because of the algebra. All right, so part A, y is equal to f at x is vertically stretched by a factor of one half about the x-axis, and then it is horizontally stretched by a factor of two about the y-axis. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out the function y equals f at x. Okay, now because we have horizontal and vertical stretches, I know I've got a and b, so I left a space in front of the function for coefficient a, and then I left a space in front of x for coefficient b. All right, let's start with the vertical stretch. It's vertically stretched by a factor of a half, so your a value is automatically a half. Okay, so I'll just draw a little arrow, indicate that's your a value. And then it's horizontally stretched by a factor of two. So horizontal stretches are related to b. Now, do I just slap two in front of x? No, because remember, b and the stretch factor have a reciprocal relationship. So b value is going to be a half. So y is equal to one half times f at a half x. So remember, the tricky part here is b. b and the stretch factor have a reciprocal relationship. You're gonna hear me say that like 10,000 times. It's not because the video is skipping or it's lagging, it's because I'm that repetitive. All right, part B. Y equals X squared, and we are performing a horizontal stretch about the Y axis by a factor of three quarters. Okay, so I'm gonna write down my original function and we're dealing with horizontal stretch, which is related to B. So that goes inside the function with X. So the squared goes on the outside. You're gonna leave a space in front of X cause that's where B goes. All right, the stretch factor is three quarters. That means B is Flippity flip, four thirds. Okay, B and the stretch factor reciprocal relationship. Okay, so three quarters is the stretch factor, B is four thirds. And now if you want, you can simplify this. I think actually we had to simplify that, that those were the instructions. I'm just gonna expand the exponent of two into the four thirds X. So Y is equal to 16 ninths times X squared. Now this goes back to what I was talking to, I think um, in the previous example in part C, four thirds was your B value. And then it once you simplified it, became an A value of 16 over nine. So if you took a parabola and you horizontally stretched it by three quarters, it would look the same as stretching it vertically by 16 over nine. So again, some transformations look like another transformation, but the graph would be identical. All right, part C, <coughs> excuse me y equals the square root of x minus three. We're doing a horizontal stretch by a factor of four about the y-axis, and then we're vertically stretching it by a factor of two. All right, so I'm gonna write down the original function, y equals, now I know I'll have an a and a b, so the entire function gets multiplied by a, and then I've got square root of something times x, okay? 
So there's my function, square root of x minus 3. We have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. So horizontal stretch by a factor of 4 means my b value is 1 quarter. So we get 1 quarter, the square root of a quarter x, minus 3. And then we're going to multiply that entire thing by 2 because we have a vertical stretch. Okay, and then if you want, you can get rid of your brackets. So we get 2 times the square root of 1 quarter x minus 6. The tricky part about these questions is ensuring that you multiply every single term by a. A lot of kids will just put the 2 in front of the square root and forget to multiply the 2 by the negative, one, uh, negative 3. So make sure you multiply the 2 by not only the square root portion, but also by the negative 3. All right. If you wanted to simplify the 1 quarter, the square root of a quarter, you could. Um, I'm not going to because I want you guys to focus on what my a and b values are. All right. Part D. Uh, 3x plus 7. We are uh, vertically stretching it by a factor of one third. So vertical stretch about the x-axis by a factor of one third. And then we're gonna do a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, if we're reflecting in the y-axis, that means x becomes negative. So that would be related to b. All right. So y equals uh, three x plus seven. Okay, so there's my original function. We're going to do a vertical stretch by a factor of a third. So that means we're going to put the one third out in front. And we have a reflection in the y axis. So the x gets a negative. And then all I'm going to do is simplify. So we have one third times 3 times negative x. So that's just going to be negative x. And then 1 third times 7 gives me 7 over 3. And there's your simplified function.